Well, let's get this over with. Juliana will lead the way. She has. She's going to have to proceed the slowest anyway. You do have the Wee Woo helmet. Yeah. So, uh, Jill, Wee Woo helmet going full speed. Um, <laughs> scrapes, <laughs> scrapes sideways through this narrow crevice. Her armor making some exceptional nails on a chalkboard noises as she goes. Uh, this is going to leave marks. I just got this armor. Oh, it's bad. Yeah, our is a second and has... His hands over his ears, like, oh, I hate this song. <laughs> it's the worst. Okay, so you guys all successfully scrape through to the other side. Cacophony notably goes last behind Imric and his men. All right. So it's just what, like, Jill and Thazita that are having the most trouble here? Yeah, pretty much. Well, Thazita's pretty skinny for a dragonborn, but she's also quite tall, so she's got to dip her head. Skinny for a dragonborn? Yeah. Must be so, but still so chunky. Yeah. <laughs> she's still quite large, but by dragon sport, or by dragonborn standards, she's positively scrawny. Okay. <laughs> Petite. Fun size. As the, as the map loaded in for you guys. Uh, it's black. Big black, big black rectangle. Big yes. yes black that's, okay. Rectangle. I am now going to reveal an area, which is a power an that area. I apparently have, if it will let me do it. Why are you Ooh. like this? It, there's an area. There it is. There, Look, it's an area. an area. Okay. Uh, Hi, you area. are in a sort of, uh, th this opening chamber here, there's quite a bit of sand on the floor. It looks like the uh, the narrow crevice wasn't quite enough to prevent like sand from blowing in here every once in a while, but it's a uh, about 15 foot wide hallway. Ceiling is about 15 feet above you as well. Uh, and on the far side of where you just entered, you can see a alcove in the wall uh, with an armored body lying on it. Nope. Oh no, it's a dragger. Gonna have to do the whale snake raven puzzle. <laughs> I don't follow. <laughs> oh, that's right. Annie's never played Skyrim. Oh, okay. It's a Skyrim thing. Kit? Yeah? Is this where we have to do the Tower of Hanoi? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish I'd thought of that. Okay. Kiddington! <laughs> By the way, uh, Jill, as you move further into the room and look to the left and right, you can see um, off to the south, there the hallway terminates in three more alcoves. Uh, and then off to the north, the hallway turns off to the east. Okay, well, it's kind of weird to go directly into catacombs. Whoever is taking the lead, be careful. Watch for traps for going into a tomb. Should I poke it? No. I think you should stab it. I think that you should hit it as hard as you can to get the jump on it. I think we should wait for Thazita. Yeah, yes. Th Thazita scrapes on through and comes out onto the other side and goes, Oh, it's strange to go directly into catacombs. Yep, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I mean, there's not even like an interior to, to like protect this room from the elements or anything. It's just straight up catacombs. Like, this is very strange. There's a lot of sand on the floor. Maybe... They're guardian skeletons, and they're gonna wreck us, and we need to hit them before they hit us. Well, see, that's the thing, right? I mean, they're they're you can get them right in the elements. They're right in an interior room that doesn't really, you know, protect them from anything. So, what are these? Just like servants, rubes, what? Watchdogs. Watchdogs. I'm gonna go with watchdogs. Does anyone want to inspect one of the bodies? I yes. said I would poke it. Okay. <laughs> Uh, stab it. Don't inspect it. Stab it. Yeah, I'm gonna check out one of the ones over here. So, you look the body over. Uh, this is... It appears to be another one of the desiccated bodies. Uh, this appears to have been a deliberate process, rather than just virtue of it's a fucking desert, and it dries out bodies real quick. It is wearing what appears to be some kind of uh, ceremonial armor. It's very shiny, uh, despite the fact that, you know, it's been here for god knows how many years. A thousand. Roughly, you would assume. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's so shiny. How are they keeping it polished? Arturos, no. No, oh, it's so <laughs> there's like really shiny gems set into certain parts of the armor. Mm. Oh, great! So it's going to be an Apu in the Cave of Wonders scenario here. <laughs> Arturos, no. Imric, no. Arturos pokes it with his trident. Arturos, Arty, 
uh, the the body the body kind of rolls a little bit and settles back onto the alcove. It's not waking up. I shoot an arrow at it when guys, it rolls. Guys, I've got to get your finger. Uh, roll a, roll a longbow attack. I'll be it. It's not a mummy. <laughs> I mean, it kind of is a mummy, but not one of those. I got a sixteen. Uh, sixteen hits. Uh, eight piercing damage. That arrow just thunks into that body. <sighs> guys, doesn't move. <laughs> until things until things start to attack us, I this is a historical sight. It moved. Does anyone want to inspect one of these bodies more closely? <laughs> yes, Juliana will. Cacophony just pinches pinches her nose and looks guilty with it. <laughs> yeah, Jill, a roll perception or investigation, whichever you want. Perception is much better for me. That's a seventeen. Uh, as you approach the body, <laughs> you look it over pretty closely. And it's starting to start to remind you of something. And then you remember that a little while ago, a group of like players, actors, came through Stormhaven and did a couple of shows and then left. And the armor here is starting to look a lot like the stage armor that they were wearing there. It's very shiny. It's very impressive looking. But upon close in- inspection... This is very cheap metal, very thin metal that would not serve as armor at all, and the gems are all glass. This is okay, 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 okay. This is either a setup to make people just want to loot things for the easy path and go away and not take anything else, or this is all fake as hell. Trap. It could be a mix of both. I mean, I don't. I mean, you probably wouldn't even want to make, like, mummies or, or, like, undead out of this. These guys have nothing on them. They'd be... I mean, I could probably murder all of these just with, like, a just with a, a turn undead. All right. This is a setup. This is very okay. strange. Have you ever come across anything like this? Um, no, I've never seen... My instinct would be to say that your first idea was the correct one. It might be a diversion tactic meant to keep looters away. <sighs> I am. I would advise proceeding with a lot of caution, though. Yes. Yeah, Cacophony Alviva, you guys need to take point on this. Got it. Okay. Let's step forward and search for traps along the way, dear. Um, look for things that we're stepping on that might be odd. Uh, best for nobody to touch anything? Just because if they are set up for looters, they're going to be prepared. Everything's going to be ready to hit people. And everything here is worth apparently nothing anyway, so it's stupid to try and take things. Yeah, honestly, everything's either going to be trapped to shit and back, because this is all a weird setup, or it's all going to be completely untrapped because they just want you to take it and leave. In this dramatic moment, I quietly take a ball out of my bag of trips and drop it, and Orson is back. <laughs> oh, it's Orson again! <laughs> Oh, we didn't have to wait long for that at all. <laughs> no. I do it kind of, I try and do it subtly because people seem really tense, and then a giant large size boar arrives and is like, squeak! <laughs> <laughs> the Zeta jumps and then looks over and it's like, oh, you have a boar! Yeah, this is Orson. Sorry about that. It'll, it'll probably be helpful. Hang on, let me drag a boar token onto the uh, boar yeah, here. Yeah, you have a large size boar token. <laughs> is is he large? Is he a giant boar? He's a giant boar. Okay, hang on. Listen, Chris gave me a bag of tricks. You're going to use it. I am going to use it. He's my boy. There's a large boar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you now have a boar. I just wanted to make sure and establish the presence of Orson. <laughs> Orson is there. Um, so where are you guys headed? Uh, Cacophony will glance to uh, Alviva and take the lead, kind of walking this way, and, uh... So off to the tunnel to in the exa- north? Yeah. Yeah, uh, going to examine the ground, um, signs of anything there, Lance left and light. Gonna keep an eye out for any obvious openings or anything like that? Yeah. Which indicate, oh fuck, something's coming. Yeah, so, yeah, the first I, thing I, you I, notice as you turn this corner is that there is a huge... Uh, in one of the alcoves, instead of a uh, body, it is instead a very tall alcove, and this is a huge ten foot tall statue. Ten foot tall statue. I can talk <laughs> mm-hmm. of a large, powerful humanoid figure wearing a helmet shaped like a ram's head. Well, that's that's pleasant. It's, uh, she... it's facing out into the hallway. 
Does this I hate all of this. Th- does this remind anyone of anything? Does anyone have a rock they can throw from their crotch like a penguin man did once? From their crotch? You mean his fanny pack? Yes. What? That sits north of the crotch? That's... What? Same difference. <laughs> you... Okay. I know none of your elves are males, but we definitely don't want to keep stones from our crotch. <laughs> dear, dear, if you want to keep... If you want to keep stones in your crotch, it's fine. I don't care. Uh, anyone have a rock to gently toss in front of this man? The, it's they're on the ground. Yeah, Kikari, Archer this rocks on the ground. Archer throws a rock. picks one up and gently throws it within eyesight of this thing. Okay, uh, as the rock uh, crosses the eye line of the statue, nothing happens. Hmm. I don't trust it. Cacophony, roll a. You're taking the lead, so roll a yeah. perception or investigation check. Yeah, though I, I would like to also walk basically just like a, a step behind Cacophony to be on the lookout as well, since I think the two of us are pretty good at that. Okay, so in that case, Cacophony, you get advantage because Elviva's helping you. Okay. Fifteen. Inspecting the statue, you see no joints, no magical aura, nothing like that that could mm-hmm. uh, indicate that this thing is about to come to life. It appears completely harmless. I have a feeling this is going to be a we're going to get very far in and then everything's going to come to life. Oh, yeah, no, this is probably a, like, run away and attack and I have to, like, fight stuff on the way out scenario. Yeah. But, I mean, also, like, does, he, does this look like something, like, from this tomb? This this this, this thing seems important. Um, the, the ram's head imagery is uh, fairly common. We don't actually have a lot of looks at what the faces of these people looked like. But this is very standard for the kind of people. The ram was very clearly an important animal to them. The ram's head appears to uh, signify some kind of guardian spirit. And then the powerful build is also uh, quite standard for a lot of the statues we've seen here. I don't know if that's uh, a a depiction of what they actually look like or some kind of aspirational thing, like the very, very small genitals you will see uh, on some statues (laughs) um, in, in in certain Hellenistic worlds. Right. Right, well. So intimidation. Let's all be ready for that to attack us at some point. Mm-hmm. And she steps forward to look around the corner. Okay, um, as you are walking across with a 15, you did not notice the trap that was actually there. Uh, <laughs> so you hear a click under your foot, and you see in the wall across from the statue, there's a row of very small holes in the wall. And, oh, and, oh, fuck. And, and four darts fire out of it at you. Oh, God. Duck, 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 duck. In fact, that's said aloud. Duck, 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 and she drops to the ground. Ducks. Is this like a reaction? Can we roll? Uh, it is. They're making an attack roll. Uh, the first one is at cacophony. That's a nineteen. Does that hit? Oh uh, yes. Actually, no, it doesn't. Okay, cool. You managed to duck that one. There's three Actually, more. Actually, no, it does. It just it just hits. So I'm okay. at nineteen exactly. A nineteen and a twenty-six. Hang on. Oy, oy. So, Cacophony, you take six piercing damage. Oh, uh, that's not and bad. And I need you Whatever. to make a. I need you to make a Constitution saving throw. That part yeah, is the bad of part. Of course. Twenty-two, baby. Hey, Ooh, nat okay. twenty. Nat twenty, nice. So you take half damage uh, from the poison. So you take two poison damage, uh, and then uh, Alviva, you are right behind Cacophony, right? Yep. You are also going to take two darts. Does a twenty-five hit your AC? Sure does. <sighs> okay. And does a 27, I bet, also hits. It it, do- it does, in fact, hit. You, you think? Okay. So you take five damage from the darts, and I need you to make a constitution saving throw. 16. Okay, you succeed, so you're going to take half damage. Oof. Uh, and that is five poison damage. Ooh. All right. I guess we're luckier that you're the beefier And one. I forgot it's, it's 2d10 per dart, so Cacophony, you also take another... Yeah, take another 16 halved is 8 poison damage. Oh, Jesus God. Oh, jeez. Okay, that one hurt. Cacophony it gets slammed with these and she goes, ouch! And she reaches down and yoinks them out very quickly. And then she just kind of grimaces. You need someone to suck on it? Like a snake bite? Please do not suck on me. <laughs> That's what she said. Re- <laughs> Real spell. Uh, suit yourself. So Jill, up ahead, you see <laughs> them walk across this pressure plate. You hear a click. You see four darts fire out of the wall at your friends. <laughs> and hit them. 
goddess! What the hell? That was uh, hurdy juice on those for sure. <sighs> that was indeed some hurdy juice. I gotta agree. Mm-hmm. She says, kind of idly rubbing her side. Yeah, that hurts. <sighs> <sighs> I don't want to go into this tomb. So goddess. I think whoever designed this tomb is an asshole. No. Yeah, Sounds you know right. what? We've had some experience with assholes who design castles, so... <laughs> maybe maybe the one who is, you know, beef goes first? Your perception is garbage, Arturos. Okay, but like, I mean, you guys check, and then I double check with my body. <laughs> <sighs> I mean, he has a point. We could have a look, and then Artie could go along with... um. His name's not Otis, I've already forgotten my own boar's name. Orson. Orson! Yes, Alexi, you should have control of Orson now, by the way. Assuming direct control, I have it. Juliana <laughs> uh, cast a cure wounds on Cacophony, you get nine back. Thank you. <laughs> Do I get some Healy Juice chill? How much- how, how hurt are you? <laughs> like on a scale of- One to real. <laughs> Ten. <laughs> she's lost 10 hit points she's at 50 out of 60 I've lost 10 hit points yeah I'm out of 50 out of 60 I was at 24 out of 40 Alviva I don't know how many mm. times I have to explain to you that even though you're a little weaker and a little gayer than you were before you are <laughs> still beefy <sighs> but it hurt though I know it hurt I will kiss it better if you want I'll kiss it better if you want <laughs> again with the kissing <laughs> It's not speed dating hour yet. <sighs> She's That's... just going to, like, sigh and ruffle Alviva's head. You'll be fine. Okay. I feel better. Okay. Kako, what do we got ahead? Um, uh, she peers around the corner. Okay, the, tur- the tunnel turns again to the south. Uh, and you can see uh, it terminates about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, about 30 feet ahead of you and turns again to the east. There are more alcoves lining the walls. This far into the tomb, there's less sand on the floor, so you're starting to see the uh, the flagstones underneath a little better. And is everything past this trap still looking kind of fakey with, in yes. terms of the corpses? A, a quick inspection of the bodies in the alcoves shows that, yeah, this is still fake as hell. All right. Well, um, Cacophony kind of sidles a little bit toward the middle after a hesitant step. <laughs> Uh, and then she looks up and down the area for a moment. She's like, well, Aviva, try to pay more attention this time. That was on both of us, I think. Yeah, yeah, we'll do better. Uh, and she kind of slowly steps forward while peeking left and right. Yeah, and Alviva follows close behind. You pass to the end of the hallway without a vent. Okay. Um, and as you turn to the uh, east, you can see that there is another large alcove with another 10 foot, uh, 15 foot, no, it is 10 foot tall. I keep forgetting. There's a lot of 10s and 15s in this document. There's another 10 foot tall statue like the one you saw before. It has got, it's got the ram's head. Okay, now we've learned. Don't look at the statue. Look at the wall across from the statue. Yes. They won't fool us again. Well, I think we should still look at the statue. They'll probably fool us again. <laughs> <laughs> they probably will. Uh, Cacophony glances to the wall. She glances to the statue. She glances to the floor. She glances to the ceiling. Don't trust uh-huh. the ceilings. Don't trust any of it. Roll investigation or perception. Can I help? With advantage because Elviva's helping you. Yeah. What, what's your perception, Elviva? I, uh, I believe mine is five. Mine is also five, so it doesn't really matter who rolls here. Cool. Only twelve this time, baby. Oof. Uh, you Oof. cannot see any, uh, you cannot see any pressure plate and you cannot see any darts in the wall. So, I am generally against people still being cautious after they roll and they don't see anything, but Cacophony just did that and it kind of fucked her. Push so, Alturos um, forward. <laughs> yeah, so she gently leaches over. She goes, I don't see anything. And she pushes Artie forward. But, oh, right. we didn't have to push. We could ask. I said I'd do it. He was willing. <laughs> as Arturos passes into the eye line of the statue, there's a grinding noise as it starts to move <laughs> and steps forward to attack. Oh, fun. <laughs> yes, please. Uh, fuck. All right. Twelve. I don't like that. A uh, sixteen. Nine. I got an eighteen. Well, you did get just get shoved directly into this thing's face, <laughs> so. <laughs> Front and center. 
Yeah. Uh, also with you, I should note, are, uh, the Zeta, as mentioned, is already there. Uh, Imric and the treasure hunters, uh, Benny and the horses, are holding up the back. One assumes that they're just kind of waiting for us to clear everything. Yeah, pretty much. They, they, you could hear them tittering amongst themselves when you walked into the dart trap. Yeah, streets. Oh god, there's too many tokens on the board. Why do I do this to myself? The Zeta's up first. Uh, the Zeta sees this thing move, uh, and is going to cast some kind of spell on it. One assumes. One assumes. Yep, she is going to, uh, do a witch bolt on it. That is an 18, uh, versus this thing's armor class of 14, so that will hit. That is 10 lightning damage, which I believe it is either vulnerable to or not immune to. One of those things. Yep, it's, it's, it's not immune to it, so it takes full damage. And she's going to maintain concentration on that. All right, that's uh, Thazita's turn. Mm-hmm. Up next is Arturos. Okay. Arturos is going to hit it. Let's do a two-handed attack. 17? Uh, 17 will hit. Roll damage. 12 piercing. Okay, uh, as your trident scrapes across it, uh, it feels like you're not... It, it's a great big rock. It's a great big rock. Uh-huh. It's a great big rock, and as a result, uh, the trident doesn't appear to be doing a tremendous amount of damage, although you do manage to gouge it across the surface quite deeply. So I gave it a scar. We really need to get some magic weapons. Yeah, but or unlock some magic weapons. Intent? What? I'm asking if my trident can be like secretly magic, and I <laughs> haven't figured it out yet. No. <laughs> Oh, come on! <laughs> Alviva, you're up. No, you have to go find Atlan's trident, obviously. <laughs> Wait, I think I can hit yeah, it again. I think Guardian might yeah. be able to do something else. I, yeah. I can at least hit it again. Yeah. Okay, yeah, attack again. 16. Uh, 16 hits, roll damage. 11. Okay, 11 piercing damage. Again, not as much as you would expect, but you are uh, making a dent in this thing. Alright, that's my turn. Alright, Alviva's up. Uh, yeah, okay. I think that given effect that Artie's weapon seems to be doing, I'm going to use my Eldritch Blast, which I can call it that now. Neat. <laughs> Don't have to be all sneaky about it. That's an 18? Uh, 18 will hit. So that's 5 force damage? Okay, 5 force damage. That does appear to be doing a bit more than the weapons. You can see bits of the statue shattering off as the Eldritch Blast hits it. Nice, and I get to do two... Blast, the next one also hits and does six more damage. Dope. That also, again, you're chipping bits of this statue off in a fairly meaningful and then I way. S- I, I say, uh, Orson, sick him. <laughs> and Orson rushes in. Yeah, to try charge and it, charge it, it, charge it. It's not far enough for me to charge, unfortunately. I need 20 feet lead up to be able to charge. Shoot. We're too close. But Orson will still tusk it. Dope. Uh, which is a 22 to hit. That'll hit. I'm going to have to have so many entries on my character sheet for all of my menagerie. <laughs> so that is 13 slashing damage as it just gets in there with the tusks. Like the trident, the uh, the, the tusking damage doesn't appear to be doing as much, but six, even 13 even halved is pretty fucking good. Yeah. Good. Good boy. <laughs> good boy. All right. Uh, so that is your turn. Unless you want to move. You know what? I'm going to back up five feet. <laughs> <laughs> Good call. Uh, Cacophony, you're up. All right. So Cacophony um, seems about to do one thing, and then she pauses, glances at the Cita, seems to decide against this, <laughs> and then she uh, instead turns to, the, turns to the giant rock guy, and um, she leans forward, and I need him to roll a uh, wisdom saving throw. Wisdom save. <laughs> 12. Okay, that's a failure on his part. So, um, he hears, We will, we will rock you. Lord have mercy, (laughs) Mackenzie. And as she does this, uh, he is terrified, wants to move away from her, and he takes nine damage. Nine? What damage of what type? Uh, sidekick. I don't care. As long as he moves away from us. Okay, um, this is a construct? Yeah. Uh, so you cast the spell. Oh, right. Nothing happens. Oh, right. All my spells don't work on anything in dead <laughs> places. <laughs> <laughs> so it does not It does not move. It, it does not appear to respond to the attack in any way whatsoever. 
Well, everyone just notices uh, Cacophony lean forward, but since no one else hears it but him, nothing happens. And she sits back and she's like, oh, right, I hate dead places. (laughs) (sighs) At least I have my tent. (laughs) (laughs) All right, up next uh, are Treasure Hunters 1 and 2. Uh, number one, I think, has a straight shot to the guy, so is going to fire a uh, short bow arrow at it. Uh, that's a 13 that will not hit. Our other friend is going to uh, shuffle over so he does have a straight shot and also fire a short bow. That's a nat 20. Good job, Horse 2. He might earn himself a name. Yeah, that Horse 2 uh, got 7 piercing damage reduced to 3. So you see this arrow fly past all of you guys just kind of chip away a bit of the statue and then spin around and land on the floor with a little click noise. Uh, And up next is the statue. And it's going to look around. And it's mostly going to look deal with Arturos first. Arturos with the bad armor class, yeah. Arturos with the bad armor class. And a million HP. And a million HP, though. Does a 17 hit your AC? Yes, it does. Okay. You take 20 bludgeoning damage. Yay. Perry. Rio. Oh, right. Perry. I have a parry. That's a reaction. That's a thing. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, when another creature damages you with a melee attack, you can use your reaction to expend one of the superiority die to reduce the damage by the number you roll on your superiority die plus your dexterity modifier. It's 6 plus 3, 9. So I, uh, okay. Yay! And so I reduce you- it by 11. Wait, what? So she, I was hit by for twenty damage, right? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I reduced that by nine. By nine to eleven. Cool. I meant I uh, reduced my damage to down by eleven. I get it. Man, okay. Math is hard. I'm gay. Hey, you did a good job. Okay, <laughs> it's gonna attack again. That's a natural one. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> so you parry and then manage to dodge the second uh, swing it takes at you with one massive stone fist. Oh, that's not good. Guys. Guys, that's not good. Don't get hit. <laughs> All right. Uh, up next is Imric, uh, who is also going to shuffle over in the hallway. So he's got a straight shot at the statue and he's going to uh, use his hand crossbow. Uh, that's a dirty 20. So that hits. So that's three piercing plus a sneak attack because Arturos is standing next to it. So that's five plus three is eight divided by two is four damage. And that is his turn. Uh, up next, the Zeta's back up at the top. Hey. Uh, wait, where, where's Jill? Where did Jill go? Nine. Okay, you should have gone after the treasure hunters. I don't know how this happened. Okay. You're up. You're up now. Thank you. And then you. you'll, be back, in the, you'll be back in the normal order. Thank you. Jill stands dumbly watching everything unfold. <laughs> how could this happen again? How could this have happened? <laughs> uh, so... My armor class is going to briefly drop down to 18 because Jill is switching weapons from the Warhammer to the book club. Excellent. And she's going to move in and take a swing at him. That's a 23. That'll hit. Nice. What spell does the book club have? Uh, well, first off, it does six bludgeoning damage. How is this guy looking at the moment? On a scale of one to a whole bunch of hit points, it's... Uh, I would say two-thirds damaged. Okay, then I'm also going to expend the spell that is in the book club that she prepped this morning, which is Inflict Wounds. Yay! Yay. And uh, because that's a successful hit on the book club, that means Inflict Wounds just pops off, which means that it takes... Let me just copy and paste this from my spreadsheet. Uh, That's 3d10, so it takes 12 necrotic damage. Excellent. Okay, so here's what happens. Jill comes Uh in with this batter-up swing, uh, cracks this statue across the leg with the book club. The book club is a magical weapon, therefore it does bonus damage, and and it does, like, the full damage. And then after a second, the the inflict wounds pops off, and uh, it doesn't say it's immune to necrotic damage, so yeah, it'll take that full damage as well. Hell yeah. So that is, uh, 6 plus 12 is 18 total damage. Oh yeah. Nice. As, uh... Where the bat hit after a second, just the entire, like, big chunks of the statue start to crumble right off. (laughs) Jill just kind of readjusts her grip on the bat. (laughs) (laughs) All right, the Zeta's back up. Uh, She is maintaining concentration on Witch Bolt and is going to roll Witch Bolt damage again. What you doing, Witch Bolt? 
Ugh, that is <laughs> ten more lightning damage. Ugh. <laughs> See, it's not just Mackenzie. That watched Wishbone as a kid? <laughs> What's this well, Mackenzie has a tendency to default no! to the, to the default to the Wishbone song. Nathan. God damn it, uh, Rios to for Quirios Rios. What's the story, next is Arturos. Wishbone? You brought this upon us. Okay, yeah, Arturos doesn't have a whole lot of bag of tricks up his sleeve, except for the one cannon arm, but he's gonna save that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's smart enough to do that, at least. Oh, Ooh. first attack is ten. That does not scrapes hit. uselessly against the stone yeah. statue. Oh, all right. Second attack is fourteen. If it beat meets, it beats. That's that hits. That hits. All right. We're gonna do eleven piercing. All right. But not really. You done? Yeah. Cool. Alviva, you're up. All right. I'm gonna keep slowly backing away just because <laughs> I don't want to get punched. I'm gonna fire off my eldritch blasts again because that seemed to work quite well. Uh, sixteen to hit. Sixteen hits. Only two damage, unfortunately. <laughs> and the second bolt is a 12 to hit. 12 does not hit. Which I think goes wide. But then Orson can follow up with a tusk, which I've put into my sheet, which is a 24 to hit. That'll and hit. And then 10, 10 slashing damage. Okay. Reduced to five. Yeah. But you're still chipping away at this thing. Yeah. All right. Is that your turn? Yes. Okay. Cacophony, you're up. Cacophony lets out an obvious girl and going, Oh, right. I hate constructs and I hate undead things and that's where we are, so no magic for me from here on out unless it's healing. Uh, mom! And she pulls out her mom dagger and <laughs> idly pops over Orson, ducks... Well, she pops under Orson, ducks past Artie, steps over here, and then tries stabbing with Mom. Okay, and you're flanking with Juliana, so that gives you advantage. Exactly. Mom. 25. That'll hit. Roll damage. Go mom. Seven. All right, that's a magical weapon. It does full damage. So you shank this statue, but good. I thought <laughs> I would shatter, but then I was like, no, that will destroy the tomb, so I'm not shattering. Uh, and she idly just kind of looks at her rapier, goes, you're not going to do anything, but here goes nothing, and stamps. Okay. 27. That hits. Nine. But that's half okay, damage. Okay, nine. Nine reduced to four. It's not nothing. It's not nothing. So the rapier uh, flashes out in a very complicated maneuver and kind of leaves a light scratch against part of the statue, but it's not nothing. All right, next up are the treasure hunters who are going to fire their short bows. First one rolls a 10. That ain't gonna do dick. <laughs> <laughs> next second one's a 12. That also does not do dick. Jill, you're up. Okay. Uh, just gonna go in for another attack with the book club. Cool. Ah, uh, 13. 13 does not hit. Shit. Anything else you're doing with your turn? No, I think that's the only thing she can really do. I don't need to do any healing at the moment. Cool. But she is going to just sort of yell at the statue. <laughs> <laughs> Will you just <laughs> fucking shatter? <laughs> well, the Tomb Guardian didn't like that, uh, that, that inflict wounds that you cast on it, so it's going to turn and take a sw couple of swings at you. Yeah, fuck oh. you! Uh, first one is a 14. Will not hit. Failed to hit. Uh, second one is a three, so you manage to duck out of the way as it uh, throws a couple of haymakers in your direction. Hey, no. Yeah, that's what I thought. You ain't got shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, up next is uh, Imric, who's going to take another hand crossbow shot. That's a 16. That'll hit. So it's eight plus three sneak attack is 11 divided by two is five. Okay, and that's Imric's turn. That's all he's got. Uh, up next is the Zeta, who is, uh, she's just, the Witch Bolt seems to be going well for her, so she's going to do that again. <laughs> Everybody else is trying fancy shit. <laughs> hey, 10 lightning damage. Wait, I got sneak attack damage on that first attack. You did. Uh, da, 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 da. I am still a baby rogue, baby rogue, baby rogue. I'm still a baby rogue. <laughs> Add three damage that isn't half. Three whole damage added. And it was magical damage, so you get to add all of it. Yep. Okay, up next is Arturos. Yeah, so I have a, an idea. I don't know if it'll work, but I since I have a whip and a maneuver called pushing attack, I was wondering if I could combine the two and try to throw the statue to a wall. Yes. Huh. Um, 
Do, what, do, what does the pushing attack say when it's a size category larger than you? If the target is larger or smaller, it makes a strength save. Instead of... Yeah, it makes a strength save. Okay, so to make it slam into a wall, which, which wall are you trying to go for? The one it's up against or the one behind you? Because the one behind you is going to be significantly harder because you would have to get, get this thing airborne. I mean, it has a little... It's in an alcove, so there's a bunch yeah. of a wall next to it. Mm -hmm. I would just like to slam it against one of those. Like, All right, cool. Could I attempt this? I think I think the regular pushing attack would just do that. Pushing attack will let you slam it up against a wall. All right. Kabedon. Mm-hmm. Kabedon like a statue. Come on. <laughs> All right, so then... Very short Kabedon. Okay, rude. Uh, <laughs> gonna do it with my trident then if I don't need my whip. I just thought it'd be cool. So 21 hits. Yep. May as well do damage on that. And then use my superiority die to add 1d8 damage. But you also have to make a strength save. Okay. Uh, good news, it rolled like shit. <laughs> Ay. Ooh. Ay. So I add 8. So it's 8 damage and you get uh, pushed against the wall, I guess. What's up, nerd? It rolled a 10. <laughs> I assume the DC is higher than that. <laughs> It doesn't say what my DC is, but I'm guessing it's my own strength. Yeah. Uh, the DC would probably be uh, your strength modifier plus your proficiency bonus plus eight. So probably yes. So probably yes. Probably yes. The proficiency Definitely. bonus alone would get it higher. So yeah. 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 Okay. So you slam it against the wall. I'm going to apply fall damage rules for this, which is 1d6 per 10 feet. Okay. So that's two extra damage from slamming into the wall. All right. And uh, as it slams into the wall, you can feel the entire tomb shake with the weight as it hits this thing, and you hear a crack from further inside the tomb. Oh, shit. <laughs> mm hmm. Uh, Arturos, is that your turn? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you don't want to attack again? <laughs> well, I don't think I can, because I had to use my superiority. No, you can attack again. Maneuver. Oh, yeah. okay. See, I don't know how to play. <laughs> yeah, you, you have two attacks, and neither of those are your... Are your, like, bonus action. Okay. Well, I didn't think the maneuvers were a bonus action. No, they're not. Well, attack again. Hit 18. 11 piercing. Okay, 11 reduced to 5. Uh, this thing is rough. It is falling apart in front of your eyes. Good. And uh, after Arturus' turn is Alviva. All right. I mean, the blasting's been working. I'm going to keep blasting. Blasty blasty. Blasty blasty. I'm just going all for it. I even know now these are some kind of magic-y fey powers that I got through unknown means. I might as well take advantage of them. I got a nat 20. Shit, nice. So that'll be nine force damage with the first one. Uh, that Eldritch Blast blasts this thing apart. Ooh. Hell yeah. You hit, you hit it right in the center of all the spider webbing cracks that have been forming in this thing, and it just shatters and falls to the ground in pieces. Ooh, you, know, <laughs> you remember those scenes in, in Power Rangers? Where it just shows a toy exploding <laughs> when when the villain is defeated. I've imagined that. <laughs> I can see it. I like to think that my Eldritch Blast is basically like finger gun. So I'll do that. I'll just blow the fake smoke yes. off the tip of my finger. Very good. Juliana spits some dust out of her mouth. <laughs> Congratulations, you solved my golem puzzle. <laughs> We're so good at traps. Yay. <sighs> Okay. So you guys are kind of covered, you guys are covered in construct dust. Uh, mm. The wall seems a little cracked. You see some cracks in the ceiling, and there was that crack from further inside the tomb. Is the, are the walls made of paper mache? What's going on? It's really old rock. Yeah. And you're really strong. It's rock, though! Yeah, and you're strong. I don't understand. So I have a spell, Artie, you know, and a shatter. Um, uh -huh. that causes rocks to shatter. But I didn't use it here because it's very old rock and it would shatter it. All rock is old. Then, you know, it does thunder damage. It's kind of a, kind of a, kind of a Tempest Quake thing, but okay. Well, that, as, as Jill says, you could do it too, <laughs> but it's also a noise thing, Jill. I am very noisy. <laughs> okay. Well, whatever. Let's go. Uh, cacophony turns to look north. 
the lateral thinking was good, but maybe don't use the walls as props. Okay? They're walls! You know what? We can talk about structural integrity later. Let's just keep going before anything falls in on our heads. The company looks yep. north and sees what's there. Uh, you look north and you can see uh, at the end of the tunnel, it terminates about 40 feet ahead of you, and you can see a sarcophagus. Hmm. Gem Jammer is performed by Alexi Peppers, Annie Creighton, Kit Walker, Mackenzie Weaver, and Rio, and is edited by Jake Mason. Our character designs are by Rio, who you can find at vriosart on Twitter, and our cover art is by Canary Witch, who you can find at doodlesfromthebird.tumblr.com. Our opening and closing music is by Reckoning Storm Audio Works. For more episodes of this show and our other shows, as well as news, check out our website at crookedrussiancamp.horse. Do you think it's worth Yeah. It kind of seems familiar. Uh -huh. Like a story from a book. Yeah. Shake a leg now, wish She knows the whole Let's theme and she's going to do the whole thing. Guys, uh, yeah. guys, Rio Adventure. has to go in 40 minutes. Come oh, on. God. <laughs>